Every chord that I'm about to play is common and generic. Every single one of those was cliched. It was cookie cutter. So are these. Yeah, they're common, they're cliched, they're cookie cutters. Everybody knows them. But here's the thing, everybody knows them because they sound amazing. That was weird, was that a third hand? I'm Adam Madison, these are the cookie cutter chords. These are the chords that everyone knows. From the greatest pianists of all time to the pianist playing locally down the street from you right now. They all know these chords. We're calling these cookie cutter chords because you could put these anywhere. As long as you know what voicing goes over what chord, it doesn't matter if you know why it sounds good. Just play it with confidence and it's gonna sound good. This video is sponsored by Open Studio. Everything that we're doing here is on a PDF. You can find that in the description. And actually everything we're doing here is part of an Open Studio course that I made called Jazz Chords for Beginners. More on that later. So here's what we're doing today. We're doing five essential chords, the major, the dominant, the minor, the half diminished, and the diminished. I'm going to give you two voicings for each of those chords that are cookie cutter. They work every time. They sound great. And then as a bonus, there's a dominant seven altered slash tritone sharp 11. I mean, you probably already know that one, but we'll go over it anyway. You might be wondering why use cookie cutter chords in the first place? Why not learn how to do bespoke Bach chorale style harmony on your favorite jazz standard from the get-go? Well, there are a few good reasons. First of all, these help us to think less. These are plug and play. You don't have to think. You can play more, think less. Second, these are directly from some of the greatest pianists that have ever played. This is the harmonic language of the masters. And third, and probably most importantly, they sound great. Simple as that. I mentioned that we were covering five essential chords. I just want to lay them out very simply here before we get into the two different cookie cutter voicings that we can use for them. So the first chord is a major seven. Basic Bob, C major seven here. We've got a major third and a major seven. The next is a dominant seven. Still have that major third, but you have that dominant seven. Right? Often used as like a five chord. Next is the minor seven. Here we have the minor third, and again, that dominant seven. And then there's the minor seven flat five, also called the half diminished. It has the minor third. It has that diminished fifth, right? And it has that dominant seven. And then finally, we have the full diminished seven. Everything's flat. So we've got the minor third, the diminished fifth, and the double flat seven, you could also just consider that A. I highly recommend you do. A cool thing just to note about this, here we start with everything sort of bright and major and one by one we flat an important note, sometimes twice. Pretty cool. The first voicing that we're gonna work on is the major seven. Something to note about all of these voicings, they're all rootless, they're all meant for two-handed comping, when you're playing with a rhythm section or a bass player, accompanying a horn player or a singer, uh, they're perfect for that. And I'm gonna have, like I said, two different versions of these voicings, sort of a high one and a low one, so that no matter what range you are on the keyboard, you're close to one of these voicings. We're also gonna take it through a couple of keys because that's a great way to lock it in quickly. So our C major seven uh, voicing starts from the bottom up on the third, and then we just go up in fourths until the very last note, and then we have this major third on top. So what you have here is the third, the 13, the nine, the five, and the seven. None of that matters, and you don't need to know any of that. All you need to know is that when you see a C major seven, that voicing sounds good. There's the root, there's the voicing. Play the root, you can hold the C with the sustain pedal, and then play that voicing, and it sounds awesome. Now. Our B voicing here, the sort of higher voicing, has the same notes, it's just a different inversion. Here we have the 7th, 3rd, 13th, 9th, and 5th on top. And again, if we drop that C, you hear this beautiful voicing uh, up there. So here is our first voicing and our second voicing. That's all you've got to know. That's it. That's it for a major 7. Now you have all the major 7s, right? Isn't that great? It always sounds good. That's the cool part. So right away, I want to transpose. I want to take this up a fourth here. So we take it to F major seven. It's the same principle. The first voicing has a third on bottom, up in fourths, 
and has that major third at the top. Does anybody know what kind of voicing this is usually called? It is, it's Mantuthian for sure, but it's not originally Mantuthian. What was it? Anyone? Anyone? Put it in the comments if you think you know. So here's our F major seven. Again, A, D, G, C, E, the third, the 13th, the ninth, the fifth, the major seven on top. And then we're gonna go to our B voicing here with the seventh on the bottom. Again, it's just a fourth up from our C major high one. We're just gonna take it down an octave, right? Because we wanna keep a range that's within reason in the middle of the piano. You can actually play these anywhere, honestly, but some ranges sound a little bit better than others. Before we take it up to B flat, just play an F, play that first voicing, play an F again, play that second voicing, listen to the voicing, get these shapes in your fingers in every key. Let's do one more key here, B flat, again, starting on the third going up in fourth with that major third on top. I should say the major third interval on top. The actual top note is the seventh. And then let's try our high voicing. Again, built up from the seventh, it's all fourths, diatonic fourths. These voicings are gold. Anytime you need to play a major seven, these work every time. And you might be thinking like, oh, this is all kind of basic. Yeah, well, you know what? Guess what? McCoy Tyner plays these voicings. How about that? Mulgrew Miller plays these. How about that? <laughs> you know, that's the thing is, yes, they are generic and they are cookie cutter, but for a reason, because they sound awesome. Up next is the dominant seven voicing. Very similar to the major seven voicing. We just have that dominant seven. We're going to move the major seven up to the root. But you've heard this a billion times, right? And then the B voicing is built up in diatonic fourths starting with that tritone, which is an um, uh, augmented fourth. Right, B flat, E, A, D, G, right? The seventh, the dominant seventh, the third, the 13, the nine, the five. This is exactly like the major seven voicing, except for the major seven, you have the dominant seven, right? So our two voicings, let's drop a C and then hit our first C7 voicing. Again, technically, you know, that's a, 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 a nine, a C9. And technically that's a C13, but you do not need to know that. And in most cases, when you see seven, when you see a C7, you can play either of those and it's gonna sound great. So let's drop a C, play our first voicing. Man, this sounds so good. Drop another C, play our second voicing. Let's go right to the next key, F. Here we have the third, seventh, nine, five, and root on the top, classic voicing. Right? You got that dominant seven, you got that third. How about the other F voicing, F7? Again, built up in diatonic fourths from the bottom up or from the top down. All fourths. Can't, you can't get away from this voicing. How about the key B flat? Drop a B flat. Just beautiful. For the minor seven, we've got something that might be familiar. Here's our C minor seven. We've got the root, we've got the 11 in our left hand, and then our right hand, we've got the seventh, the third, and the fifth. Again, remind you of anything? Funny, right? Same voicing, different chord. Hmm, interesting. So here is our first C minor seven. We drop a C, and that's how you can do this low, either octave always sounds great and then our next uh, c minor voicing is another one that's built in fourths right so the fifth the root the eleventh the seventh and the third beautiful how gorgeous is that our, our other keys here we have f minor seven it's built up in fourths from the root that major third on top Here's our second F minor seven voicing with the third on top. Isn't that great? Our B flat minor seven, right? The root and then built up in fourths. We've got that interval of a major third on top. So we have the fifth of B flat minor seven on top. And then our B voicing here. Again, these sound great. 
you can learn these in an afternoon. These shapes are so familiar. It's just fourths in that key, right? Isn't that great? So you can really plug and play. It's almost like a, it's a, something to make a shape of a food a cookie cutter. Next up is the half diminished, also called the minor seven flat five. I actually prefer calling it the minor seven flat five. I know a lot of people like half diminished, but to me, this is a little bit more clear. Uh, so the half diminished is an interesting one because the half diminished uh, chord traditionally by like bebop pianists, you would see instead of C minor seven flat five, you might see E flat minor over C. Right, so you, the literal shape is an E flat minor triad with a C in the bass. Right? It would be used in the key of D flat, which kind of makes sense, right? Going to B flat minor. Uh, but we, that doesn't mean that we can't have great sounding voicings. What we can do is lean on that principle here that a C minor seven flat five is kind of like an E flat minor over C. Again, you don't need to know any of this. You can just learn these shapes and know that they sound good. But here, basically, we've got an E flat minor 6-9 voicing over C. Works every time, 80% of the time. Right? So here's my C minor 7 flat 5, also called C half diminished. How beautiful is that? Our B voicing might look familiar. We've already played this voicing, hint, hint. But again, a lot of these work on multiple chords. So our first voicing here, we have the third, the diminished fifth, flat five, the root, the 11, and the seven in the key of C. Again, that's just an E flat minor six nine voicing for more advanced players. And then our second voicing is the minor five root 11, seven, third on top. Beautiful, beautiful. And then again, really quickly here, our other keys should be super easy to get to, right? Third, five, root, 11, seven. And it's inversion here. What about B flat? Way up here. Third, five, root, 11, seven. That's a, I love this range. It's a gorgeous range. Beautiful. And then our B voicing here. Look at this, you probably don't know this voicing for a B flat minor seven flat five. You might not even play a B, B flat minor seven flat five. How often are you doing a cadence to A flat minor? But I'll tell you what, you have this in the bag, comes very handy. Our final voicing is the diminished seven. This one's a bit tricky for some people. Now let's check out our first shape here and then we'll talk about how we can uh, invert it. So our C diminished seven, again, you don't have to know the theory behind any of this. It's based off of the C diminished scale, the whole half diminished scale. There's a little note there. It's a little juicy note, just so you know. And everything else is kind of a inside baseball note. But here we've got the third, we've got the double flat seven, right? we've got sort of the nine, got the, it all becomes very sticky with diminished harmony. We've got the diminished fifth, we've got the root on top. Now, there are three other exact inversions of this chord. Here they are. Look in the comments, do you know what is going on here? I'm not gonna tell you. Here's our original voicing. There are three other versions of C diminished seven. What are they and why are they so easy to play? Someone, we have so many music theory nerds on this channel, I know someone knows and is furiously typing right now or they're furiously correcting someone who took a guess and is totally wrong. Either way, it should be very entertaining. So here's our C diminished seven. What about our F diminished seven? Again, we start on the third. We have this tritone, this perfect fourth, major third. This shape, oh, this shape is mwah, chef's kiss. Beautiful for a diminished seven, right? Uh, finally, our B flat diminished seven. Again, we start in that third. Got this beautiful chord here. And again, there are three more shapes to this that are perfectly symmetrical. If you know, please put it in the comments. Our bonus Jonas shape is the dominant seven altered and tritone sharp 11. I know that old hat. So this will cover you on any dominant seven altered chord, like a C seven altered. And it's got an inversion, right? 
We've got the third and the seventh of C7, and then an A flat major triad. That gives you that C7 altered, and you can do it with an inversion, the seventh and third, and another inversion of an A flat triad. Now, both of these are C7 altered. Right? Get that in your hands and your head. These are both C7 altered or C7 flat nine, uh, sorry, C7 sharp nine flat 13. They are also G flat seven sharp one. Both of them. They're like twins. They're like cousins. They're like Geminis. They're, they're the flip side of a coin, right? So the C7 altered in this shape specifically, G flat seven sharp eleven, they are so related. So when we talk about tritone subs, and we will, just know that this voicing plays double duty. Like if you're in the key of F and you're doing a two five in the key of F, you want to do a C seven altered. There it is. Or maybe you want to do the tritone sub. Same thing. All right? Let the bass players have the root. Let us just do these big juicy sounds. Check out the F seven alt. Again, the third and the seventh, that D flat major triad of the second inversion, right? The seventh and third, the D flat major triad of the root inversion. Also, tritone. If you move the root of tritone away, just like our C7 alt, you get the uh, tritones sharp 11, the B7 sharp 11. Isn't that great? It's a twofer. That's what we call it in the biz. Uh, next up is our B flat seven alt two inversions, right? You got the third and the seventh of B flat dominant. You got the G flat major triad in both inversions. It's as cookie cutter as it gets. And then you have its tritones sharp 11, E sharp 11, same voice. If you're going to E flat, I have a bit of an etude. This is kind of a modified bird blues. This is a blues that you might see, right? I'm looking at my bass player here. I got a bass player right next to me, by the way. Uh, and so each one of these voicings is one of our cookie cutter voicings. And I just want to play this through, but this is yours to keep. It's part of the PDF. And I just want you to hear that sometimes these generic cliches, they just, they make beautiful art. Shall we? One, two, one, two, three, and. great you want to try it give it a go one two one two three and If these cookie cutter chords are your jam and you want a little toast to put your jam on, you should know that we can continue the party over at Open Studio with my course, Jazz Chords for Beginners. In the course, we talk about all of these five note voicings, all of the high and low inversions, how to use them. And most importantly, I practice with you. We do a series of guided practice sessions with me and a metronome and I'm playing bass for you. And you can actually put these to practical use. It's one of our most popular courses at Open Studio for good reason, because it actually helps you to digest these chords in a way that is practical, that's useful, and that gets them into your playing as soon as possible. That's it for me today. Thank you so much. Again, go to openstudiojazz.com for a deeper dive. Till next time, happy practicing.